I thank you, Senator Biden. Thank you, uh, uh, Lasker First, I'd like to welcome the Minister for Agriculture, Food and the Marine to the House. And I want to thank you for personally coming yourself. I know you're a very, very busy minister, and so there's pressure on your time. But I do really appreciate that you're coming to the House yourself to deal with this matter. Uh, and, and my commencement matter today relates to the EU regulations 2019-6 on veterinary medical products, which is to come into effect on January uh, the 2022. Uh, the forum minister on the anti-parasitic resistance stakeholders group uh, has sought an economic impact assessment in advance of the implementation of the EU regulations 2019-6 stroke on veterinary medical products. And they, there was a very detailed discussion on the Joint Directors Committee on Agriculture, of which I'm a member. Uh, we clearly have a lot more to do, a lot more discussion, because it was a, a very elongated meeting. There was a lot of uh, items that we just didn't manage to complete. Uh, so it's an ongoing issue, and I'm sure it's exercised your officials a, a lot, because your officials did turn up. Uh, these laws and the EU regulations and laws will restrict the sale of antiparasitic drugs for livestock to farmers by making it illegal for anyone other than a vet to prescribe them. These drugs are routine medicines given to animals to kill parasites, such as you know yourself, gut worm uh, and liver fluke and, and a load of other um, parasites. But currently these medicines are available from licensed merchants right across this country pharmacies and vets. So there's a wide distribution, a wide chain of distribution of these medicines. The restrictions has, be, uh, uh, has been proposed to deal with what is known as antiparasitic resistance. And I do understand and know the concerns about vets and officials in your department in relation to this, and it's a, val it's a valid concern. By removing the, the, the pharmacies and licensed merchants from the chain, we run the risk, of course, of creating a monopoly around these products. Rural, pharmac rural pharmacies and licensed merchants will be impacted. Farmers will have to pay prescription charges, possibly, adding to the cost in relation to these matters. And of course, we run the risk of increased prices and higher prices too, and the risk of a monopoly in, in relation to veterinary and agricultural medicines. Northern Ireland, on the other hand, Minister, and we talk about that sort of shared island, and I'm all in favour of shared island, but Northern Ireland uh, has a derogation of this regulation. If we do not do this, we enter into uncertainty with separate jurisdictions, separate approaches to dealing with this, and the, the negative issues all around that. So, Minister, this is really a concern. Uh, I think it's important that we have consistency of approach how we deal with this across the island of Ireland. And, of course, we cannot and will not and should not compromise on human or animal health and safety and an important knock-on effect to the food chain. And so I understand the whole chain of events, and I understand your officials' concern, but I also understand the concerns about the same unified approach across the island of Ireland. So in conclusion, Minister, um, you will please, I would urge you to seek a definitive legal advice from the Attorney General in relation to this matter. I think it's important that we have a, an economic assessment of the impact of this, this, this uh, directive or regulation, because I think that's really important, and what, what, what the anti-parasitic resistance stakeholders want is some sort of an economic assessment of the impacts of it. These are critical issues in relation to agriculture, your breach, animal welfare, animal health, the food chain, responsible persons, and I think they've worked well. We may need to improve issues around responsible persons for the, for, for the, for the impact on this legislation or regulation, and it'll, it will ultimately impact on rural communities, many rural communities in relation to this and the cost. So look, in essence, uh, Minister, I'm asking, have you got legal advice? Is it your intention to seek legal advice from the AG's office? Is it your intention to seek deregulation, or, der or derogation, should I say, uh, from this regulation? Thank you. Thank you. Well, to response. I just hope that his, the temper and the mood of his response will not be coloured by events of the last few days. By last Sunday's events. <laughs> Minister, you're welcome. Um, thanks, Senator Riley. No, and listen, um, my congratulations to your own county in that. I think, uh, apart from the, the, oh, tremendous dis <laughs> the, the tremendous disappointment we had in Donegal, I think uh, there was great joy um, 
uh, for, from everyone to see um, Kevin um, I must say, after off my favourite holiday place. So. <laughs> anyway, thanks, we'll Minister. I agree on that. Oh, thanks, yeah. thanks, Chairperson, and best best wishes in the uh, in the semi final as well. Um, thank you, Senator Boyan, for the uh, for, for raising the topic today. And I know it's uh, an issue that you have um, raised previously with me or, before one to one, and indeed discussed at the recent. Agriculture, Rockless, Rockless Agriculture Committee meeting as well. And, and um, as you will know, um, Senator Boyan, EU Regulation 2019 uh, 6 on veterinary medicinal products comes into effect in January 2022. And as part of the transposition project, uh, the Department has committed to undertaking a regulatory impact assessment. This process essentially addresses the same issues that an economic impact assessment would. The regulatory impact assessment will focus on areas where Ireland has national discretion with regards to transposing the regulation, specifically where intended policy decisions may impact on stakeholders. The anti-parasitic resistance stakeholder group was established by the Department primarily to address the concerns stakeholders have with the changing route of sale of anti-parasitics and its impacts. At this juncture, the regulatory impact assessment um, which evaluates all the impacts, costs and benefits of the proposed policies cannot be finalised until the relevant policy options have first of all been agreed. These include the length of validity of a prescription for antiparasitics, the definition of a proper assessment and the development of a secure electronic prescribing system. It is my intention that policies will be developed in a pragmatic manner that will deliver a substantive role for all stakeholders who currently operate in the supply chain for veterinary medicines while protecting the efficacy of the products to ultimately uh, to the benefit of, of farmers. Irish farmers would be, as we know, the big losers if, if we were to allow uh, resistance to anti, anti parasitics to, to, to develop further. On the question of seeking a derogation to the, to the regulation, um, when the regulation was signed into law in January 2019, it provided for the, the exact same regulatory regime as currently exists in Ireland, i.e. that anti parasitics uh, can be supplied without prescription. And this regulation didn't change that. However, in line with their statutory remit, the Health Products Regulatory Authority, or the HPRA, established an expert task force in January 2019, and this reported at the end of December 19. And the task force identified risks in terms of the environmental safety of antiparasitics and conclusive evidence of widespread antithelmic resistance as well. The results of these findings meant that Ireland could no longer avail of Article 34.3 of the regulation which exempts certain products from requiring a prescription. If the, it is this report that has had the effect of requiring Ireland to make antiparasitics subject to a prescription and not the new regulation, okay. Ireland hasn't got national discretion on this issue. The, the derogation in Article 105.4 was never a legal avenue open to Ireland as it refers to allowing someone other than a vet to prescribe certain medicines if our national law allowed this prior to January 2019. Ireland clearly does not fall into this category as no one other than a vet has previously been legally allowed to prescribe and the legal advice received to date reaffirms this view. As recently as last week an EU parliamentary question was answered um, which, indicate, which, which uh, provided the response um, that the derogation can only apply if national law allowed someone other than a, than a vet to prescribe. My department is engaging further in the matter with the Attorney General's Office for a definitive legal view. As I'm aware, other stakeholders have presented an alternative legal interpretation. While we continue to explore all avenues at this point, the department's view remains that Article 105.4 is not an option open, um, open to us. Uh, the department, uh, Senator Boyan, remains committed to working with all stakeholders over the coming year in delivering a regulatory framework that provides a role for all actors currently in the supply chain while ensuring uh, farmers have access to import important antiparasitics uh, that help them to manage their farm and animal health. Minister, thank you very much. And as I said, I would share all of your concerns that you set out there. And I suppose what gives me hope is that you know you haven't ruled out uh, ongoing engagement with all the stakeholders because that's key and critical. And as I say, you are aware, of course, of the responsible persons. You are aware of the distri distribution network of parasitics 
uh, in, in terms of rural communities, you are, of course, conscious and concerned that any costs or increased costs in veterinary prescription charges is a concern. You are, of course, concerned and should be concerned about the potential of a monopoly and, of course, the inconsistency of having two different regimes, both north and south. It's a one island in terms of agriculture. It should be, at least. That's our objective and that is our aim. So, in terms of your response, I want to thank you and I think it's important that we have ongoing discussion on and I will certainly bring back your response to the Joint Works Committee on Agriculture. And I want to thank you again for your time here today. Uh, thank you, uh, Senator Boyan. And um, yeah, no, listen, I'm very much aware of the issues and the concerns among um, wholesalers and um, uh, uh, merchants in relation to the potential impact that this would have on their, their business. Also, in relation to concerns among the farming community as to whether any change would uh, lead to an increase in costs or uh, uh, additional challenges for them. And certainly I see the, the role of the stakeholders group as being an important one because I do want to, while we have to, we have to comply with our obligations in terms of, me, uh, of complying with e EU regulations, I want to ensure in terms of how those are implemented and how we, uh, how, how we meet those obligations that, that uh, they are practical, that they take into account um, the, uh, the, the, the situation facing farmers and ensure that there isn't an increase in costs and also importantly as well recognise um, the role currently played in terms of uh, uh, the, the licensed merchants um, in, in this process and the fact that they, have, that they have significant business in this regard. Obviously there is an obligation on us to ensure that, uh, that in terms of um, working towards uh, ensuring no build up of uh, anti-parasitic resistance that we do everything that's required of us around that. But uh, I certainly will be working with the stakeholders group uh, over the period ahead to look at how we can implement the, the derogation in a way that takes into account all those various factors. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Michael, the Canada. Senator Byan, can, as acting leader, can I ask you, Senator Byan, to move the adjournment of the House under 245? Uh, to 235. 245. 245. 245. 245. 245. 245. 245. 245. 245. 245. 245. 245. 245. 245. 245. 245. Sorry. Thank you. Minister.